All right, mates, welcome back. Jail Scott Fishing and Eats. Everybody is doing well on this Thursday, heading into the weekend. We got a lot of stuff going down. We've got uh, Bass Nation, Virginia Bass Nation down on the James. Uh, well, it's the James, Chickahominy River. It's at a riverfront. I don't know if the whole James, the James is out of bounds for that or not. Um, Might just be the Chickahominy River. On Saturday, we also have MLF uh, Tackle Warehouse Invitationals Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Sunday, they cut to 50. Uh, for the final 50 on Monday at a small wood in Matawoman Creek on the Potomac River. So two biggest events um, in the region that I am aware of this weekend. But we're going to talk now about fish tips. Okay, getting fish tips. You can find Get Fish Tips on TikTok. They got about 1,000 subscribers already. They've been on TikTok for a few weeks. Um, it's their platform. Fish Tips is a platform in which you can go and buy fishing Tips. Now, what does that mean? Okay. It was a live stream last night. It was on hours. Trust me. Hours last night on that live stream. Um, About all the different questions and hiccups and controversy and all of this. And it's primarily, mates, tournament anglers that feel threatened. And I'm throwing, I use that word because legitimately there is that concern that like, uh, um, that this somehow is going to impact the sport of tournament fishing, okay? which is a small, small minutia, mate, okay, of everybody who owns a boat, everybody who owns a fishing rod, everybody who has a fishing license, and everybody who fishes. No disrespect intended to the professionals. People like Gerald Swindle, okay, well-known, loved, revered, right? People will, will hint on every word that man says, okay? But they live in a vacuum, okay? They do. And I don't mean that to be disrespectful to G-Man or anybody, but they're, they're living in a tournament vacuum of their life is tournament fishing, right? Their life is on the road seven days a week, the grind. It is crazy when you talk to these guys Everything to go. Most of us think when we tune in on Saturday or on an MLF event or a bass event that that's all that went down. That they just showed up at the lake and went fishing that day and got a hundred thousand dollar check. Right? The winner got a hundred thousand. When people don't understand, these guys are like maintenance guys. These guys are like maintaining their boats, their truck. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it that a lot of people, you know, you just don't ever see. Unless, of course, you tune into some of the guys who actually are, are like showing that life now. Um, on YouTube, which is, is really, really interesting. You know, so I, 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 it doesn't surprise me that they would feel threatened, okay? Um, and I'm looking right right here on the screen right now, which you have in front of you. This is the website. It's been some kind some, it's not an app, mates. It's it, yet, I mean, it could be, um, but it's a website. So there was some confusion on that. Um, but if you look here on this page on Fish Tips, that it is fishtips.com, okay? The first one you come to from Brett Herter, professional tournament angler, professional guide. So he is a tournament angler and he is a guide. Now, from what I understand, everybody on this platform that is a seller, okay? No different than you're on eBay as a seller. You're on Poshmark as a seller. You're on Pinterest as a seller. I think all of that was lost last night in a live stream from a lot of people that were like questioning this, like the platform. Well, it's no different than any other platform. Like, you know, I can sell my used gear or gear that I don't want or gear that I don't, I have that I don't know I'll never use. I can list that on a platform and sell gear. No one has a problem with that. But can I not list where I caught my fish and sell it? People have a problem with that. Why do they have a problem with that? The biggest reason is, is a lot of people have this notion that they own something that they don't really own. Okay? And I know that's controversial to a lot of people, but I don't own any spot on my river that's mine. If a guy takes you out on his boat, he is giving you his spots. Right? Right? How many people have gone on... Now, again, if you're on a vacation, it's different. You're just going on a guide trip. You know, I'm going to go down to Texas. 
take my bud, go down to Texas, go on a guide trip. Probably two guide trips. I won't be back. I probably won't be back to Texas in three years, four years, maybe even five years. You know, even though my wife lived in Texas for a long time, I don't know when the next time we'll be back to Texas will be. Okay? So that's different than if I book a guide on the Susquehanna River for smallies, and I pay $500, and I spend eight hours a day, and he takes me to all his prime spots, and then the next weekend and the next weekend and all that, I go up to those spots to fish where I paid the guide to show me where to fish. So many people do that. I see that on the Potomac River and the Susquehanna all the time. Okay? Um, is that wrong? Well, they paid $500 for that guide trip, for that guide to give them the juice. They paid for that, right? Well, this platform is like your guide without actually going out on the guide trip. All this information is what you would get if you booked these guides when you can't. And that was the one argument I tried to make to people is scarcity, right? During the summer months, it can be it can be impossible to get a guide on the Potomac River for tidal. Probably uh, Steve Jaconis. Probably he's probably booked all the way until August. Okay, on DC, he fishes primarily in the DC uh, northern part of the uh, Potomac uh, watershed tidal fishery. He's probably booked till the end of, till, till the end of August. But how can you get the knowledge? How could Steve be able to leverage his business and provide that knowledge to a broader people when he without having to be on the water? Which means without having to use the gas, without having to use the transportation, the maintenance, the wear and tear on his boat and all of that to people he can't take out anyway, right? If he wanted to. And I'm not saying Steve does because I haven't talked to him. I don't know. I don't know. I, he, I don't think he's involved in the con at all. Um, But Ben Milliken is. Ben Milliken has tips posted on this platform. He has two tips posted on this platform. One for Wheeler Lake for $100, which was just an event. And one for an undisclosed lake in Texas, which is probably Ivy. Okay? For $500. All right? Because Ivy's just a mecca right now. It's all the buzz. It's all the rage. Okay? So, he's a professional angler. He's won a bass open. Right? I mean, and he's a guy. And this is his information. I mean, we live in 2023. We don't live in 1985 anymore. And a lot of the people that have been fishing the bass tours for... 15, 20 plus years, they don't like this. And I wouldn't imagine that they would. But technology keeps pushing the envelope, right? Okay. Live scope, prime example. You either love live scope or you hate it. Okay. Why do the people hate it? Because they feel like it puts people at a disadvantage and on fish who have the means to spend that kind of money on electronics versus the other guy out on the water who doesn't have that means, okay? And some people just don't like it for tournament angling because it's just like they don't like flogging, okay? And they don't like sight fishing and they don't like bed fishing. Everybody has an opinion in fishing, okay? Nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you look at Brett Erders right here, his three right off the bat are three waypoints for a five-pounder on Jackrabbit Lake. Three waypoints for a five pounder on Cottontail Lake. Three waypoints for a five pounder on Cocktail uh, Cat Claw Lake. Right? Boom. Waypoints. That is fundamentally the biggest issue that the professionals and a lot of the people that don't like this kind of platform have right now is waypoints. But waypoints are a small part of this platform. Most of the platform is actually fun fundamentally educational tips. Okay. Which I look at it like this isn't any different than what I do on Facebook or what I do on YouTube or what I do in my river videos when I'm out on the river. I'm not a licensed, I'm not a guide yet. Like, I'm, you know, and I just provide the information for free, okay, to build my audience, right? And, and you know, and to meet people. I can, and, and this is the point that was made in the live stream last night, mates, that people need to understand. And while I don't think that every single angler in that's a pro angler is, getting information, um, you know, nefariously. I don't think that. Do I think 25% are? Probably. Okay. I think 25% is probably a fair number. 
of everybody who competes in any competition for money. Kayak fishing, boater, bass, MLF, bass, anything. Probably 20% of the people probably have done something that's not within the intent of the rule. Let me, I'm not going to say cheating, okay, but not within the intent of the rule. It's kind of sketch or suspect, okay? You know, your buddy tells you where he caught fish, you know, and uh, on Friday, um, and you have a tournament there on Saturday, and you take that information, you go out, you freaking slay him, and you want to check. Did you cheat? Right? I mean, it's always a gray line. Who's going to know you talk to your buddy? Nobody. There's no record of that conversation if you just were talking to him or having a biscuit at freaking Hardy's in the morning, right? Or your coworker at work, chatting while you're on the line, getting shit done, right? No one's going to know. You'll know. Again, it's always, they're never going to be able to like regulate this. Now, should tournament anglers be going on fish tips to get waypoints for their tournaments? That's something MLF and Bass need to worry about in their rules. And maybe they need to have a relationship with this platform if this platform does, in fact, again, this platform is only about two months old. So if this platform does start to generate a lot of volume and a lot more people begin to, to post up information. Like, for example, I went in last night. There's nothing for my area, okay, that I found on Fish Chips yet. So nothing on the Potomac River yet, nothing like that on the river yet. So, you know, so for someone living here, who wants a tip to go out on the river on Saturday. Right now, the platform in its infancy doesn't have every state covered or every major, major body of water covered yet. It probably will within a year, okay? And mates, this is not really any different than the generally accepted platforms that some of the professional anglers have affiliations with. I don't think this is that much different than Fish the Moment. I don't think this is that much different than when you log on your phone and you research a lake, fishity comes up and hot spots come up and all that stuff, right? That's general information, community holes, right? What makes a community hole a community hole? It is it is a well-known location that holds fish that people in your community have caught fish on. It becomes a well-known community hole where everybody goes to because everybody knows other people have caught fish on that hole, right? Everybody in the community knows about it. Okay. What's wrong with this platform? Also talking about, or someone on this platform also revealing that community hole, right? Is And so it becomes this like tug of war between my spot, my, I got to protect my spot. Well, the only thing that makes it your spot, if it's a community hole, is the fact that you got a low launch number in a tournament and you could get to that spot before 150 other anglers could, right? I saw that Bass Nation series, right? There are community holes on the Potomac. There are grass flats on the Upper Bay and on the Potomac. There's eelgrass on the Potomac that everybody who lives here knows holds fish, and it's a race to get there. How's that any different? Right. And so becomes this tug of war. So log on the log on the platform. It's a free platform. Okay. Like I said, people like Ben Milliken have he has two right now. Um you know, and they range like forty dollars all the way up to like I think five hundred was the most expensive one that I saw. And it's mostly for the most part guides and some younger anglers, BFL anglers. There's a couple on here. Um that talk about, um, you know, how they won their BFL event or how I finished, how I caught 22 pounds BFL, you know, on river XYZ, lake XYZ and all that stuff. And to me, that's their information. They're willing to provide the public. Okay. So I don't know whether or not other anglers have any problem with other anglers in their community, in their bubble vacuum doing this or, is it angler versus guide that they really have a problem with? There's always been that guide angler tug of war, right? But yet what was revealed last night, which I think is actually true. And again, like I said, I'm not a guide yet. Okay. But if there's a major event on the Potomac river, okay. Or if there's a kayak fishing event 
on the Potomac River or on a lake um, or on Susquehanna or on uh, Upper Potomac, like recently, uh, Shenandoah, James River, James River Tidal, James River Upper, I get 15 to 20 messages in my inbox on Facebook for information about the fishery. I know exactly what the gentleman is talking about when he says he gets inundated with hundreds of messages of anglers competing in tournaments for checks seeking information about baits, water, conditions, grass, all this stuff. Now, is that the same information as somebody asking you for a specific waypoint? Probably not. I mean, waypoints are like a a big, big crutch of this issue. But here, I'm going to lay this out there for you. How are you going to, and again, this platform is not perfect yet. It is not, you know, it's interesting to me, okay? Because I believe it provides a platform for most of the people who are my audience, okay? You know, no one on the Bass Tour or, or Bass Pro Tour or, or, Bass Elite Series needs to be following J.L. Scott Fishing for fishing tips, okay? Like, come on. Like, so my audience is, and the people are the people I meet at the ramp. They're the people I meet out when I'm out, out and about. And people from YouTube or whatever that like the short form content or like this kind of content where we break things down or they like some hot takes. They like some controversial stuff. They like a schmuck to get on YouTube and just freaking rant, Okay. That's the sites for. The sites for the recreational angler, the guy who's a weekend weekend warrior, weekend angler, doesn't have time to pre-fish. You know, think about that, man. I mean, you, you go on a, a trip to the state park in your state. It's got a really great fishery in it, right? You don't have three days to pre-fish. Like, you know what I mean? To figure, to, to get the lake dialed in, to figure out where the fish are, okay? You know, if you really want to, if you're that, and you really want to get on fish, so you're going to be talking to people. You're going to be talking to the ranger. You're going to be talking to the to the to the conservation officer. If you you're going to be talking to the girl at the state park at the entrance. You're, anybody who knows anything about what's happening in that lake, you're going to talk to, right? We know this to be true. We just need to be honest about it. But when there's money involved and there's people's livelihoods involved, this is where you get people circling the wagons. And I'm not saying they're wrong about this. There is nefarious actions that could happen with a site like this it's gonna you're gonna pay they're gonna pay you someone's gonna pay you a hundred bucks for that waypoint on the potomac river okay and where did you get that waypoint see if if i give out if i go on this site and i break down the upper potomac the monocacy the shenandoah susquehanna whatever and i give out waypoints they're mine i found them i caught fish there That's what I would talk about right now. That waypoint may be somebody else's waypoint who maybe won a tournament on in that same stretch or that patch of grass or that rock or that ledge or whatever. And they may get upset about it, but that's on them. Okay. Now there, that's a big difference than someone going out and following Gerald Swindle on an elite event and basically waypointing every place he stopped during the day because they suspect if Gerald Swindle stopped on those points, he knew there were fish there. Does it mean that he caught fish there? No, not unless you visually saw it and you were making notes all day long. And if you don't think that there are people who do that, you're living in a dream world because there are people who do that all over the country on their local lake. Now, again, that's for their own personal benefit, okay? These major lakes like Gunnersville and Chickamauga and that are just tournament after tournament and people who live near there and that's the lakes they fish all the time, Wheeler, okay? Things like that, okay? People, when these major events come into town, people get out on there, down in Arkansas, places like that, okay? Table Rock, all right? And they do that. They do that for their own personal personal benefit, though, and then they fit because they, that's their home lake. They're not doing. They're not traveling. That's the thing. Is what happens if someone decides to follow bass all over the country, doing this and making this a living of selling waypoints where anglers caught fish? That's a problem. Is it illegal? Nope. It's not illegal. 
but hit the 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 founder of the company fish uh, fish tips he'll take the heat for all that they'll blame him for providing someone the platform on which to sell stuff it reminds me of crypto how bitcoin provides an ability for people to launder money so therefore bitcoin is bad no the people laundering and using bitcoin nefariously are bad the people that are following bass jacking other people's waypoints for profit and using the platform are bad doesn't mean the platform's bad okay um at some point people need to take owner uh, responsibility of what individuals do so again you know I, I don't have an issue with the platform i don't now obviously they've got things that they have got to to be able to uh validate in terms of um who these people are okay because you've got content creators professional guide content creator okay um matt o'connell nine locations in the pattern that helped me finish second in the bfl all-american an all-american okay again 100 bucks nine locations for that right it says undisclosed location but you could probably figure out where the un-american where the all-american was and which one Matt O'Connell fished in? And these things are certain. These people are certified. Okay. What does that mean? Okay. That was another question last night. It just means that people investigated that they are who they say they are, that this is actually Matt O'Connell. Okay. It's actually an angler. He actually got verified on Facebook, got verified on Instagram, got his YouTube channel verified. He's verified on those platforms and then he gets verified on this platform. Um, he's also got to provide a bank account with his name and all that information so they know he is who he is so when someone is actually paying the hundred dollars they are actually paying matt o'connell for example okay not just throwing matt under the bus um but i'm just saying that's just an example okay so you need to have a bank account with your name your address your phone number all that information that gets validated by the platform to make sure that you're an authentic individual okay now how See all these go 45, 60, 100 bucks. See, even the founder, Dreamcatcher Guides, he's he's not raping people. 60 bucks, 100 bucks. He's not raping people. You're going to spend 500 for a guide, mates. And you might not catch fish. Okay? Remember that. So, again, it's just interesting to see the difference and and the difference in um presentation on the site of what different guys are willing to offer. It's their juice to sell. In my opinion, if it's your juice to sell, sell it. This is America. We need to stop with the commie bullshit, okay? Like your socialized spot, socialized community hole, right? No, nah, this is America, okay? Now, no one should be able to sell your waypoints. Like they nefariously jacked from you, either trailing you, trolling you, stealing your waypoints from your graph. Okay, whatever. In my opinion, co-anglers should not be able to sell waypoints. Because they're not driving the boat. They're going where their boater is taking them. So they shouldn't profit from where their boater took them. Now, if they went out in their own boat, because a lot of co-anglers obviously have boats of their own. They're just not entered in, in, the, in the competition as a boater. And maybe they're pre-fishing in their own boat and they find stuff on their own waypoints. Okay, but again, how do you prove that? That's going to be tough. So a lot of people are going to be taking a big gamble going on a site like this for their reputation from other like anglers. Unless it proves to be profitable. Fish the moment. Look at the professional anglers associated with fish the moment. Fishing the moment. Okay. There, that's two, two, three hundred dollars. What about the anglers that are charging for seminars? Three hundred, four hundred dollars for an s- online seminar. The, for lake breakdowns. What about the anglers that are charging for an entire lake breakdown and they give you waypoints? Okay, for three hundred fifty dollars. Again, this guy, this guy, I got a lot of respect for him. That small business guy, small business owner. You know, someone who's owned businesses, someone who's invested in businesses. He's got investors as well. Okay, I mean. Other people are doing this, right? And so I think he's just kind of considered as an outsider. Plus, he kind of stirred it up a little bit with some controversial comments. But that's okay. That's just smart business, okay? 
um, because people will attract you, tr- attract to it and research it and find out what it's all about. People like me are going to come on YouTube and talk about the website with 24,000 subscribers and followers. I don't know, my th- you know, maybe 100 people, 200 people tune into this video and friggin' go and check out his site. Again, it's free. See what it's all about. See what anglers are on there. Check out if the, your backyard lake is on there. Check out, or maybe they may decide to actually become a seller. Um, And that's how America works. Like, again, that's how America works. Again, people beat their chests up a lot about being Americans, about being patriotic, except when it comes to money. And then when they got something they got to protect. Okay. But again, none of this stuff is um, intellectual property. I love when I hear that. When I, when I, 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 you know, a guy, you know, talks about intellectual property. It, uh, what? Intellectual property? Okay. Fishing. Intellectual property. Unless someone steals your freaking graph. Breaks in. How are you proving that a waypoint is intellectual property? If it's a community. We get this all the time. People, anglers go out, they whatever, and complain about this guy's on my spot. He was on this spot. It was a, but it was a community hole. It was a, everybody knew that hole on Wheeler. It was a community hole. So it can't really be your spot. I mean, you just got there first or he beat you there. It's like, it's all this stuff. Like it's somehow like, again, it's just a lot of guys beating their chest up. And, but when you're on the short end of that stick, I understand that frustration from people. You know, I mean, it's like, you think about yourself, man. You wait online, 250, 300 people deep on Black Friggin' Friday to get your big, big TV. And you finally, finally get in there. And guess what? All the TVs are gone. You're pretty pissed. Okay. Anglers waiting to launch. They got launch. They're launching out. They're late in the not in the draw. Boom! They get out. All of a sudden, there's four people on their freaking spot. By the time they get there, because of their draw, they're pretty pissed. I'd be pissed too. But being pissed doesn't mean that they're in the wrong, right? And so that's what I think a lot of people, more people, have to understand. And and like, you don't have to go on the site. You don't have to use it. You know, you don't have to like. You know, you can object to it. Um, and then we'll see what's going to happen, you know, in the coming year. But I mean, you've got a lot of people. Look at this, Gavin. You got a lot of people with MLS behind, MLF behind them and bass behind them. Okay. Up on stages. Okay. These are anglers in these tournament trails, right? That see this as a way in which they can generate income to then fund their angling pursuits. There's nothing wrong with that. And this comes at a time when Bass has gone to nine required Bass Opens to get into the Elite Series. Mates, that's 60 some thousand dollars, I imagine. Okay? How's a little guy going to ever get into it? Right? Fund, fund his dream. How's a little guy going to fund his dream? You know, and all this notion about sweat and getting out there like last night was like most guys just beating their chests about how like you need to get out there and you need to find them holes on your own. Right. We have all found holes on our own. And we've also all found holes in quality fish with information provided to us by other anglers or YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or any number of those things. You still got to catch them. Doesn't matter whether or not you got a waypoint or not. You still got to catch them. I watch video. I talk to guys all the time. Two guys are on the same spot, the same ledge, the same grass bed, the same everything. One guy catches 16 pounds and the other guy catches four pounds. They're in the same spot. Okay? No one can catch the fish for you. Okay? No one can catch the fish for you. Plenty of people can give you all kinds of direction and information to help you put yourself in the position to catch fish on your own. Okay. Nobody catches the fish for you. Okay. Um, and I think that gets lost in these discussions about my spot and my waypoint and my honey hole and my this and my that. Okay. Because it's, it's relatively easy. Pick an angler and follow him. If someone wants to do that, right. If somebody wants to do that and be nefarious, they will figure out a way. And maybe that's the knock this platform needs to combat is making sure their security is, is on the point making sure they're investigating all the people, making sure that people are not are trusted people in the community and not just getting points following anglers. All right, mates, check it out. Fishtips.com. 
Check them out on TikTok, get Fish Top, Fish Tips. Let me know your thoughts. Have a great day.